Hi everyone, welcome to Oakville Gallery's home studio classroom. This workshop is entitled Exploring Symbolism and my name's Erica and I'll be leading you through this workshop. So symbolism, the word of the day. Symbolism is a way of using images or icons to represent truths or ideas without saying it or drawing it directly. Iconography, or using icons, can be thought of as a visual language rather than verbal. So in art history, as well as contemporary art, symbolism and iconography can be found everywhere. So did you know there's actually an art history dictionary listing different objects and what their meanings are in paintings? So for example, if you see a dog in a painting, it symbolizes loyalty. A stormy sky means there's danger ahead. A dove means peace and calm. A spider signifies betrayal or a dragon signifying power. Even certain colors have specific meanings, so such as purple symbolizing royalty or wealth. But we use colors and statements to evoke emotion or feelings all the time. When we say the statement of, I feel blue, we know that that person's saying they feel sad. We have yellow signifying happiness, we have red hot anger, or green with envy or jealousy. So examining symbolism in artwork is fun because you're searching for the meaning almost like a treasure hunt. We actually have some sample images of artworks done by famous artists within our accompanying PDF document. And the first one that I want to focus on is Keith Haring's Radiant Baby. Keith Haring is very famous for using symbolism in his uh, colorful artwork. This radiant baby, literally radiant with the rays coming around this little childlike figure, is symbolizing innocence and a new beginning. One of my favorite paintings, the Ar Ar Arnolfini portrait by Jan van Eyck, actually has tons of different meanings strewn without this painting. So we have a dog, again, by the feet of the figures, showing loyalty. On the left-hand side, you can see oranges by the windowsill. That signifies wealth. The mirror in the back, which we've actually featured a zoom in on that part of the painting within our PDF is actually two figures that you can see that are reflected in the mirror that are behind the figures in the painting. And it's the artist and actually you, a portrait of the viewer looking at this painting. And the chandelier candle just above their heads, there's only one candle lit, which means oath or marriage because candles were usually used during that ceremony. There are so many different symbols throughout this painting, and that's only just starting and uh, at the beginning of the list of what's incorporated into it. So the activity that we're going to be working on together is an activity allowing us to create works with our very own and personalized symbolism. So we're going to be creating self-portraits using iconography. And this art lesson allows for us to reflect and use the common art practice of symbolism to represent ourselves and what makes us who we are through images. So we'll be doing outlines of either our faces or our heads, our hands, anything that you want. It can even be an object. So for instance, if you really love music, you can do an outline of headphones or a stereo or a music note, whatever you want. We're going to be drawing very large outlines uh, onto our page, our blank page, creating a composition and filling it with different icons and imagery that symbolizes who we are as we self-reflect and we show our audience or our viewer who we are and the symbolism of us. So let's get started. Okay, so I have all of the materials ready for this activity. I'm going to be doing a drawing. This is totally up to you what you want to use. This could be a painting project. It could be a drawing project. It could be a collage project. Anything that you want for use of material to create this um, artwork filled with symbolism about who you are. I've chosen to use some white paper today some pencil crayons, and then I have some colored markers here. Um, again, please feel free to use absolutely whatever you want, but I felt like drawing today. Now in the PDF that accompanies this video, I've outlined that I'm going to actually use my hand as a tracing. So instead of doing a portrait in the, um, the traditional sense where I look in a mirror and then I draw my face, 
I want to use a part of me or a representation of something that's very important about who I am. So I work in the arts. I love creating art. And something I've noticed about my life and all of the, the things that I do is I use my hands a lot. Okay, so I thought this is a really great way of representing a part of who I am and a part of my life and what's important to me by maybe actually tracing my hand. So what I want everybody to do is just think about how you want to represent yourself in your portrait, what form, the main form you're going to put into your composition. So again, it could be a tracing of your profile. Um, it could be maybe a drawing of a place that is incredibly important and fundamental to who you are, or it could be an object. I used the example of headphones. Um, in the introduction so you could draw that and just do an outline but the whole point of the first step is to actually just outline what you want all of your different symbols to be inside of okay so what I'm going to do is my hand just in the center of the page here I'm going to choose a darker pencil crayon I'm not you can use pencil um, but I think I'm just going to sort of wing it on this one and just go with the flow Okay, so I'm just outlining here. This doesn't have to be an outline um, or tracing, I should say. You can draw it freehand if you'd like, but I just felt like going with that. So I've got my hand here. Okay, that's going to be the base of my drawing. So I can fill all of this up with symbolism if I want to. I can just do a nice colorful pattern in the background. I can leave it white, whatever I want to do. And the same for your artwork as well. But I really like the idea of sort of filling my hand up with all the different symbolism of what makes me me. I also thought it'd be kind of cool if they kind of sort of mesh together and it's like a collage of images. It almost looks like tattoos on the hand or something. So I've got my tracing done. Okay, next thing I need to brainstorm things that I want to include in my drawing. What symbols do I want to put within my artwork that make me who I am? So things that are important to me, I love dogs. I love my dog. I really love gardening and planting. I love flowers. Um, I love nature. It's very important to me. It's a big part of my life because um, I love hiking. That's another thing that I maybe want to incorporate into my symbolic drawing. Um, I really love, obviously, art. So maybe I'll incorporate something else in here. Maybe I'll draw a little paintbrush. Something that I feel is very important um, in my life and the type of art that I do. I really, really love music and I love reading. Okay, so these are things that I definitely want to somehow incorporate into my hand outline. So let's start with nature and my hiking. Let's sort of lump the two together. I, I feel like I want to put some sort of landscape in here. I have an obsession with sort of with hiking and looking at different landscapes. Now you can do this with pencil, but just to sort of the purpose of this workshop and moving my video along, I'm just going to go in with directly with my pencil crayons. Okay, so I'm just going to sort of map out, I guess, my landscape here. And I'm just going to go in for the coloring. I'm just going to go for it at this point. So I've decided to do some hills, right? I'm just going to incorporate some shading. I don't really want my symbols to be like very direct. They don't need to be. So like for instance, I don't have to draw a dog because I love dogs. You can choose something specific like maybe I can draw my dog Maggie's collar, right? There's she has a very specific collar that we chose for her that has the stars and the moon on it. And whenever I think of you know, the stars or the moons, I think of my dog, Maggie. So little things like that, they don't need to be, you know, direct symbols. They can be things that are just maybe an inside importance or inside knowledge to you or a family member or a friend, right? I do have some markers that I can also incorporate to make this a little bit more of a mixed media piece. See how it helps with my shading? As well this could look really cool where you're just sort of layering maybe i'll add a 
touch of yellow in there. I really like color, so I want this to be a colorful piece. Add a little bit more in there. Okay, so I've got that. And then I also really love being in the trees. So maybe I can add some trees in there. Just do some evergreen trees. Now yours are gonna be really well thought out. Mine I'm just starting to sort of fill my hand. I wanna make sure that I can fill this up a little bit while I have the time in this video. So I'm give a little sky and create almost like a little landscape drawing in here. Incorporate a little bit of everything into my symbolic art piece. I put this at the center of my hand as well. I thought it'd be cool because it's sort of at the center of my life. This is something that's very important and I try and do every single week. So I thought also where I place it in my outline or within my complete composition or drawing is also a symbol within my artwork as well. It also has meaning where I'm choosing to put this also incorporates different ideas and importance and theme to my life. So I've got a little landscape in there, which is super important to me. Okay, so that represents my hiking and my love of nature. Next thing, I really love reading. So maybe I can do something where it's, I don't really want to draw a book. Again, I don't want this to be too literal. But what if I were to do the pages of a book? And it doesn't have to be, you know, just a, a tiny book. Like I don't have to draw a tiny book right there, but what if I incorporated something like, you know, just a zoom in on the pages, sort of coming out like that. Right, so you can sort of see these pages of a book opening up. I've zoomed in and I've sort of done more of an abstract type of representation of these pages. I'm going to go in with some, just to sort of signify some of the writing. And I want to keep that white and I'll fill this, the rest of this around it with color. So I'm really liking that. I'm just going to sharpen my lines here just to really crisp it up, make it stand out in my drawing. So that's my reading. What I really like too, it's almost like an extension of my landscape where they almost look like sharp mountains in the background. So I'm sort of collaging these different symbols within my outline of my hand. Okay, so next thing I wanna do is, hey, why don't I use that idea about my dog Maggie? And what if I drew her collar? So like I said, on her collar, she has the sun, uh, sorry, the stars and the moon. So I'm gonna maybe draw this moon here. And this actually is the perfect yellow because it looks exactly like what's on her collar. I'm just gonna do the stars. This is what her collar looks like. And we always put a purple collar on her. So the background color I'm gonna do is purple. So this looks just like my dog Maggie's collar. Something very important to me in my life. That I've chosen to symbolize. I didn't want to draw a portrait of her. So when we make these drawings, they're almost like a treasure hunt. People can also try and sort of decipher what this means, what all of this stuff means. Someone could look at this and say, oh, she really loves the night sky, right? And that's that's fine, right? This could be something where even we just keep the meaning to ourselves. This is the beauty of adding symbolism 
to artworks. There are still so many different debates where people still talk about all these historical paintings and say, well, it could, this symbol could mean this. And this color that they use could mean this. And no one actually knows because the artist was around hundreds of years ago. Right? So people lecture and, and debate all of these different things that they think a painting could mean, but people don't actually really know. They'll never get a full answer. Okay, so that's Maggie's collar that I've drawn. What else do I want to add in? Oh, art. I want to incorporate different art things. So I'm thinking of, I really, really love colorful art, as I had mentioned. So I also really like using watercolors as well. So what if I did sort of what look like colorful splotches, All right? If you've ever used watercolor and you sort of load your brush with the water and the, your color of choice and you just sort of dab it on your paper and it kind of does this like blossom and a sort of splotch of color. Why don't I maybe add some of something like that, right? And I'm just going to do some red. I really like the color red, right? And sometimes it drips. So you'll have these other little paint splotches around it, right? And then let's do maybe some orange. Let's do these colorful splotches. Like that. Maybe some green. Something like that. That's looking good. Let's get some blue. Now again, I'm moving quickly within this video, but I want everyone to take their time, think about how they want to represent these things. If you want to go with a literal representation, there is nothing wrong with that. Like I said, instead of drawing a dog, I drew Maggie's collar pattern. But if you want to draw a dog, put a dog in there. There is no right or wrong. This is your artwork. It's a representation of who you are. Right? So who am I to say that you can't do anything? Right? If everybody's stuff looked a certain way, everyone's art looked a certain way, it'd be so boring. So I've got my color splotches here for my love of painting. Right? So what's the next thing that I maybe want to add? Oh, I love music. I love music so much. So maybe I can incorporate, I could do music notes. Um, I could draw an instrument that I really like, right? But what if I did something like, hmm, like a stereo, you know, or like your speaker and it sort of looks like mesh. What if I did something where I do another zoom in almost like my um, book down here and I draw a close-up of that speaker. So I do what looks like the speaker there. And then maybe there's, you know, like uh, the buttons over here. That's the top of my speaker. Something like that. Okay, so I've gone for an abstract view of the speaker, right? So something else that I really like, um, oh, my love of flowers. I really love flowers. And my favorite flower is actually sunflower. So what if I did some sunflower petals? They almost look like, because I'm sort of zooming in, they look like flames unintentional but a really cool outcome I think so let's go in I'm gonna try and do some shading here where I've got some light yellow a darker shade of the yellow it's like this and a very important part of the sunflower is the center so I just kind of want to give a little of that right you know that big black center the sunflower so I've done that 
I love, love, love sunflowers. Okay. Another thing, I really love cooking. That's something else that I really like to do too. So maybe I'll incorporate that over here. Do you notice how a lot of the things that I have here have to do with my hands? Still like making the art, right? My cooking is going to be here. So hmm, what can I do to represent cooking? What could I do to represent cooking? I also really like baking as well. So that could be another thing that I do. What if I do, um, what do we use in that? Let's do, oh, let's do a whisk. So maybe I'll do, this will be more of a literal symbol, something like that. And whisks go like that. And then you go like that again. Right, so you've got the whisk there. And then I want to color around it just to give it a little bit of depth. Maybe we'll continue my sky behind my whisk here. Remember what I was doing with my markers? Let's bring in a little more depth too with that. Like my sunflower leaves are kind of, that's so much better, disappearing here. So that's where the mixed media really, really helps here. There, look at that. This helps so much with it really popping from the page. Okay, so I've done my whisk. I'm really liking this. Let's outline maybe Maggie's collar ends. Okay. Beautiful. I'm super happy with this. Next thing I want to do is fill up just the bottom part of my hand here. Now this is something that you can, again, like I said, color within your background, but I think I want to keep this nice and simple and just fill in my hand with all of my symbolism. Okay, so let's maybe continue. I'm trying to think of what I can add that's down here. Something that's very important to me is my family. My family means everything to me. So maybe putting this here too, it's the foundation of who I am, right? Everything comes from my family. My whole life comes from my family. So I think this is a very appropriate place for me to place it on my hand or within my outline here. And something that really makes me think of my family is just how much I love them. And what if I were to do sort of this color of love, this you know, this red color. And what if I sort of did sort of the beginning of a heart? I really like zooming in on things. Also, my sister is very important in my life and she's born on Valentine's Day. So I think this is a very appropriate representation of that. Because when I think of Valentine's Day, I think of my sister. So I'm going to color this in quickly. Fill this in. I'm very curious to see what artworks everyone else makes because I think it's a really wonderful way of learning about each other. So there we go. I'm pretty well finished. I am just going to fill in bits of this here just because I don't want any unintentional white spots. I don't want to fill that in. And then last but not least, let's fill in some green down here too because my favorite color is green. So I think that's a, a good color to choose to fill this in. And there we have it. I think it's looking pretty good. Now, if you wanted to sharpen up your outline, I did pull out black marker. 
I just think it looks really good. When you finish this off. Gives a nice clean edge. There we go. This is my version of a symbolic self-portrait. This is, I think, me on a page in an artwork. And I can't wait to see what everyone else makes as well.